Nope. Bruh. NANI?! Be honest, at least once you've played this game before. Study shows that 270 million rounds of it are played every single month. So yeah, a wide majority of internet users actually play it. But still, for the minority of you guys that are fortunate enough to not know about it, don't worry, I'll explain. In 2014, the idea of making an endless runner browser game was born, and a certain developer named Sebastian Gabriel from the Chrome design team, along with his co-developers, decided to build one, which you all know today as the Chrome's dinosaur game. The idea was to make it an easter egg whereby the user can play when they have no internet connection. Though it was said to be an endless runner, there have been rumors on the internet about the game actually having an ending, but that's besides the point. So the idea for today's video is to rebuild this game from scratch. However, with a twist, it's going to be in three dimensions. Actually, it's not really much of a twist since they already read it in the title. So as I was saying, we're making the game in 3D. And if you're watching this and for some reason you're expecting me to use some kind of library or game engine, then you're definitely new to the channel. Which is a good thing. That means chances are I'll be getting new subscribers. But short answer is no, we don't do that here. The game originally was built in JavaScript, so we're going to be using exactly that. And for the 3D rendering parts, we're going to be using CSS and HTML. And to make this even more challenging, I have exactly 8 hours to do it. Make sense? Start the time. But before we can start coding, we need to first of all get a feel of what it is exactly we are trying to build. So essentially you have a running dinosaur which is you, whose basic movements are to jump and duck. Your goal as a player is to use these movements to avoid the coming obstacles. The more obstacles you avoid, the longer you last. The longer you last, the more scores you get. And when you hit an obstacle, you die. Pretty straightforward. was already set for me to start writing some actual programming. So the first step would be to get the player to jump. And to do that we just simply write a jump function that reduces the y position of the dinosaur, making it to go up. Then next we implement some gravity so it falls back down once it gets to a certain height. It took a while but I was able to imitate the exact sequence on how it was written in the original game. Next up we build the obstacles. In the meantime we'll just be using blocks with different colors to represent each one of them.
Now the obstacles comes at random, so for us to do this, we store each obstacle in an array. Then we write a function that randomly selects each one and then passes an animation making it move from right to left. Then we wrap everything up in a loop so the cycle can repeat itself. However, there is one flaw to this logic. If you're well acquainted with the actual game, I'm sure you've noticed that at the initial start of you playing, the game only gives you the cactuses. It's as you advance that the birds start to come. So this is the point where our code actually flops because our function is just randomly selecting each obstacle. So chances are you could select the birds at the initial start of the game, which is exactly what we don't want to happen. So this is the part where I start talking with my inner selves to come up with a solution to this problem. Um, anyone? Yes, you there, the incredibly handsome guy back. Yeah, how about we increase and reduce the chances of each item being selected? We could set the cactuses to have about, I don't know, 50% chances each, then the birds to have about 0% chances at the initial start of the game. Then as the player advances, we even everything up by giving all of them about, I don't know, 10% chances each. Now, that could work, but um, the only issue is I don't know how to do that. And I barely have 4 hours left of my timer, so now isn't really a good time to be learning new stuff. Any more suggestions? Um, I have one. Wait, do you guys hear something? Yes, I said I have a suggestion. Who said that? I'm sitting right in front of you. I don't see any- You know what? Just talk. Okay, so how about we set the array to only have the cactuses at the initial start of the game. Then once the player advances, we just add the birds to the array, giving them a chance to also be selected. Okay, now we're talking. Not only is this method extremely easy, it also takes little to no time to write since it's just one line of code. Next up, we add some collision detection. If you don't know what that is, it's the ability for your browser to be able to detect a collision. Wow, divine greatest explanation. Yeah, it's not really what happens after the browser detects the collision that's the issue. It's how to get the browser to do it. So to do this, we need to get the X positions of both the player and the obstacle at real time. So I just log both positions to the console. The numbers at the right are the player's collision, while the numbers at the left are the obstacle's position. Okay, now pause. Zoom in. Yeah, yeah you see this part? Yeah, that part exactly. Now, this is the part where we want our code to actually catch. Now, I don't want to bore you with all the fancy calculations involved, but here's the code to check if both expositions intersect. So at this point, the logic part was done. The only problem now is that the game looks like your mama, so we need to fix that by adding some models. This is usually the easiest part about making video games, but in this case, it's not. It's the exact opposite. You mean the hardest part? No, the medium part. Reason is because we would have to make 3D replicas of all the sprites in the game. So luckily this game doesn't really have too many sprites, so I'm pretty sure if I code from now without any distractions, I should be able to finish the game on time. <laughs> So I kind of flopped with the whole timing myself idea, but good thing is I actually predicted that this was going to happen, which is why I said earlier in the video that I was going to give myself an extra 2 hours in case I don't finish up on time. Dude, you never said that. Well, I'm saying it now. Now, like every professional YouTuber, I forgot to record the process of me coding the 3D models, so um, here are the end results. We have our dino, characters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You are never going to guess what the next one is. Character 7. In your faces, you all thought it was going to be the birds, right? Well, the right is actually the bed. There is no character 7. So now all we have to do is to take our models, slap into our project folder, and make a few tweaks in our environment so they can adapt. And by a few, I mean another extra 30 minutes of code adjustment. <sighs> well, I love my life. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the most enticing, the most jaw-dropping, the most exquisite, the most, wait hold on.
That makes no sense. Anyways, I present to you. Yeah, I forgot to give it a name. Okay, so we are done, finally. I think it came out really well, at least for a game that was built in roughly 12 hours. I would say the only issue I had, which I still have, is frame rate. You see, the width of the original game is about 150 to 200 pixels, so the time it takes for an obstacle to move from right to left is quite small. But my version of the game, it's exactly 2000 pixels. That's 10 times that amount. You don't really see it because I set the game's perspective to 3000 pixels. Now for the game to run smoothly, I would have to make it move pixel by pixel, which means I will need a tremendous amount of speed for it to cover 2000 pixels fast enough. And the fastest we can go in terms of speed calculation, it's exactly one millisecond. So to explain this a bit more clearly, if this is the fastest you can go, this is how fast we would actually need to go. Well, kinda. I really just randomly scaled squares, but you get the gist. It's like 10 times faster. <sighs> I don't know. I really don't know. I could ask some of my friends or classmates for help, but doing that requires me to socialize, which I don't support. I'll probably just work on it based on my own research. Hopefully, by the time I'm uploading this, I would have fixed it. Well, anyways, I'm not really sure how to end the video. Happy first video of the year, I guess. I'll see you in the next two weeks or a month. I don't know. I don't have a schedule.